Hi, good afternoon and welcome to this uh, second in the Civitas Portis Behavioural Change series of webinars. Uh, my name is Tim Durant. I'm a member of the international team at, at Vectos. And uh, yeah, I've been very pleased to be working with five cities in the, in the Civitas Portis project. Um, so those are the cities of Aberdeen, Clapeira, Antwerp, Trieste and Constanza. In our first webinar, we looked at the, the human dimension of behavioural change. So we heard about the, the work that Aberdeen and Antwerp are doing with, with companies in, to look at behavioural change activities, travel planning and how people can change their commuting habits. In this uh, second webinar in the series, we're looking at the digital dimension. So we are looking at the apps and, and the information platforms that the cities are providing in order that they can uh, help people to make different travel options and explore those different travel options. So um, just to provide a very uh, brief introduction to the, to, to, the, to the webinar. We know that, uh, as, as we all know, there's obviously a crowded marketplace of different route planners that we can use on our phones and on our computers, um, and they help us to discover new travel options. They provide us with real-time information so that we can make reliable journeys um, so we know what's happening during our journey. So the question is why then should a, why then should the port of cities seek to develop their own route planners when there are so many available on the market and that's something we'll be exploring with the, with the cities during our webinar today. Um, just to run through the agenda with you quickly, first of all, we'll start with the city of Antwerp, who've been developing their route planner as part of their Smart Ways to, to Antwerp campaign. Uh, during our last webinar, we heard about many of the, the initiatives, their approach for employers and how, how they work with businesses. And in this, in this webinar, we'll hear, hear from Zilka, um, Silke Lemun about uh, the Smart Ways to Antwerp digital route planner. It's been uh, great working with the, with the city over the last few years and hearing how this has developed. So I'm sure it'll be a really interesting presentation from Silke. And then in the second part of the, the webinar, we'll move to, to the Adriatic coast, to the city of uh, Trieste, where we'll be hearing about the, the development of a, a data sharing platform there and how they're therefore using that to provide route planning and, and, and parking information for people who are visiting the city and for the citizens. So that will be a, a two-part presentation with uh, Fabio Lamana from the city of Trieste presenting about uh, their objectives and, uh, and the stakeholding engagement process that they have, have worked through. And then we'll also be hearing from uh, Giorgio Iacobellis from Autologs, who's been a technical partner developing, developing the platform. So, so those are the, the three presentations we have for you in, in, in the webinar today. Um, during the webinar, in terms of, there will be opportunities for you, for you to ask questions uh, from, the, from the presenters. We'll have a short break after Zilka's uh, presentation to run through some of those uh, questions. And then again, at the end of the webinar for questions either about Trieste or Antwerp. Unfortunately, you'll all be in, remain in mute, so we can't have a live discussion. But we would ask that uh, you you ask questions as they occur to you in in the questions box that you'll see on on the webinar, so that we can we can filter through those questions and ask those of the the presenters dur during the breaks. So um, yeah, thank you very much for joining the presentation. I would uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing Zilka's presentation about the innovative Antwerp route planner. So I'd like to uh, move across there for to to Zilka. Hi Zilka. Uh, maybe you can uh, switch on your camera. Thanks. Thanks again. And uh, yeah, the, the floor is yours for your yours for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, the Smart Ways to Antwerp uh, Route Planner, which we've been working on for several years now, um, and I believe many more years to come. Uh, but I'll begin at the start at explaining you why did we start to build our own route planner. Well, um, everything started in 2010. Um, when the city of Antwerp had plans and a lot of plans to make a lot of big changes um, in the city, 
by building new tram tracks in the center. Uh, we were going to increase the height of our bridges over uh, the canal. And as you can see on my slide here um, is the project for um, many years to come now um, is to uh, make our ring road, which is here, to make it completely round. So these are very big um, infrastructural projects that will get a lot of um, that will make a lot of traffic jams while working on it before things will get better and uh, traffic will be more fluent. So in order um, to make all these changes and to change all the infrastructure, we had to get to a modal split um, of 50-50 to guarantee a fluent traffic flow. Um, and if you ask me, okay, modal split 50-50, what does it mean? Well, it's super easy. It means that 50% um, of uh, commuters or people traveling around Antwerp, uh, maximum 50% will still take their car and the other half, the other 50%, will use alternatives to, to drive through or around Antwerp, which means walking, uh, public transport, a water bus, biking, well, any alternative, even working from home, which we've all gotten accustomed to the last few months, um, are great alternatives um, to get to that 50-50 modal split. Um, but then, of course, it's a good objective, but how are we going to get there? Well, we split um, our measures into hard measures and soft measures. Well, the hard measures are really um, um, tactile, like uh, we built Velo bike sharing system, we introduced a water bus, which is actually a water taxi um, to go around our rivers, um, we are improving and expanding our park and rides, um, and so on. And then the soft measures is something Smart Ways to Antwerp is working on really hard. Is um, well, Tim already introduced it to you, or our colleagues introduced it to you. The previous webinar is um, the employers' approach, um, working with mobility providers, but also the website, and which I'm going to explain to you today, um, the route planner. And just to frame it for you, how the route planner um, works into the nudging and the behavioral change, um, I'm going to shortly show you our model that we work with. It's called the 7E model. I'm not going to explain the whole model. You can <laughs> look it up online if you're interested. But actually, this model um, kind of makes the framework for getting people through um, a funnel. And the funnel starts with people that have no idea what's going on. They drive in their car every day. They're frustrated, don't know what to do, and just think, oh, let's hope tomorrow there's less traffic jams. They don't think about anything else. And then at the end of the funnel, you have the people that went through a whole process like, oh, I'm in the car, but maybe I can take something else. They look it up. Oh, I have several options. Maybe I should try some of these options. Then maybe they've tried it out. They thought, well, I mean, the, the bike sharing system, the bikes are really good. I was there fast. I knew what time I was going to get there. I love it. And then they decide to do it permanently. So that is the permanent behavior. The end of the funnel, it's where we want to get people. Um, and how we're going to get them through the funnel, um, you can see on the slide, um, is uh, categorized around 7E. That's why the model is called 7E. Um, like, enthuse people, encourage them, engage them, let them experience things. But also, um, on the bottom half, the enable part, um, making it easier for people to change their behavior. And especially around that E from the 7E, is um, where the root planner um, plays a huge role um, for making that behavior change possible. There, I'll take you through it. So maybe one of the questions um, you ask yourself when you hear, okay, so the city of Antwerp is building their own root planner or has built it, because we've had it for a couple of years now. Why would you even go there? There's so many root planners already there. Uh, people take, um, Tom -tom, they have Google Maps, they have Waze, and tons of other options for route planners. And yes, that's what people are used to, uh, but especially when we started out, all of those route planners 
had one goal. Before you even got a route, you had to choose, or I'm going to walk, or I'm going to take a bike, or I have a car. And then from A to B, your entire route was going to be with that vehicle. Or at the max, you would walk to your bus stop, take the bus, and then get off and, um, and go further. And they were all focused mainly on how to get there um, the fastest. But what they don't take into account is, okay, when you get in your car and you arrive um, at your destination, you can't find a parking spot and you don't know where the closest public parking is. So you start driving around in the city center um, and probably maybe around rush hours or there's other people driving around or maybe there's roadworks on the way to your destination that you didn't know about and well Google Maps doesn't know about so you have to change routes and at the end of the day well at the end of your trip you just lose so much more time than the time the app tells you you're gonna lose um, and maybe and that's where we come in it could have been smarter not necessarily faster but smarter or more interesting or you could have a more qualitative trip by changing from uh, your car to a park and ride and take a tram or you could have taken a train and then a, a bike sharing system or if you have a foldable bike uh, you can take it on the bus on the tram and then take it on the water bus for free uh, over the river to the port area of Antwerp so maybe that is smarter and that's why we built our own route planner, because that's something all of the others couldn't show uh, users. And so I'm going to talk you through um, some of the options that we built in. So one of the things is uh, we avoid traffic jams by using, by using real-time traffic data. It's not something super special, but we also have the historical uh, data from all uh, traffic jams. So we can also put uh, an amount of time on the expected traffic situation. We have a layer on our smart map with accidents. Um, and we are really going to push um, not the fastest route, but the smartest route to you, which, as in the example you can see here, could be to park your car at a park and ride, take a tram, and then walk the last six minutes. Um, what else is really important? Like I told you, we combine so many options in so many ways, like walking, biking, taking a shared bike system, bus, tram, train, water bus, car. And we're even working on adding all of the, the smart mobility solutions like uh, free floating steps, free floating scooters, we're uh, incorporating taxis, uh, free floating cars and everything else because at Antwerp we keep expanding with all the available systems and we're constantly keeping up while well, trying to keep up with everything that comes with to give all our users the all our users the, the whole spectrum of possibilities so they can start filtering and then getting the, the results they like or they prefer um, as an example here they can take their own bike from their home to a train station switch to a shared bike system park it at a, a bike sharing station and then walk two minutes more um, some of the other things uh, that are not necessarily making it easier for our uh, users, but really enlightening them or telling them about stuff is uh, we have a low emission zone in Antwerp uh, where a lot of cars um, have to pay uh, for entering or not, are not allowed to enter anymore. And then we have this uh, pop-up or this little um, notification that tells you, pay attention, if you're going to take your car, this route will go through that low emission zone so they know it in advance or when we have really big roadworks we're going to have a similar kind of notification watch out you are driving to a large construction site the journey times that we tell you even though they are real time they can change any moment and they can only raise um the other thing that we do is we really try uh, to push our view from Antwerp and uh, City Council on uh, mobility through the route planner. 
So what we do is by ranking the routes uh, to the smartest option, uh, we take into account all of the, the, the measures um, that we push, like we want you to walk if your uh, trip is under two kilometers. We want you to take a bike if the trip is under seven and a half kilometers. And we push e-bike routes uh, for under 15 kilometers. Um, and then LZ warning I told you about, and then also we push public parkings and parking rights instead of parking um, in the street in front of uh, the location where you need to be. So then you can ask yourself, okay, so now is this the big solution? Everybody's using this, everybody's multimodal, using the route planner, uh, combining different options. Well, this was the start. Um, this is how we. Um, we put it in production um, over a year ago, but now we're still working on adding more um, possibilities and making um, making uh, the whole route planner and the app that we have for it even better for our users. That's what I'm going to walk you through. Uh, what we developed uh, half a year ago is that people can make an account, so uh, put in all their personal information why is that so they can tell us in advance okay i don't have a car or i would rather not take the train so don't give me these options and they can push um, the results to their app so after they looked it up online they can put it through their phone and start traveling what else did we incorporate uh, the filter system in the beginning we uh, it was a, it's a really difficult uh, mathematics behind the route planner of combining and what's uh, smarter what's faster everything else so now people can filter um, after looking up a route um, we enhanced our smart map with a pin you can drop um, and you can ask give me everything around me for mobility solutions um, around me in a walking distance of five minutes or maybe a biking distance of 10 minutes and then the map will show you okay this is around you there's a shared car here, you can take a shared bike there, you have a tram station around the corner, and that's just really showing people, oh, I have so many options just right around the corner. I didn't know that I had so many possibilities besides just taking the car. Um, and then a preview of what we're launching this summer um, on app, uh, it, it could come any week now, um, is that we've started incorporating all of the shared um, bikes, steps, scooters and cars that are free floating. Um, and they are real time, so um, if somebody's driving them, we don't get a signal. So this is all the options in real time that are um, available for driving around. Um, and also we added all the real-time information for our public transport because we know one of the thresholds for people to use the public transport in Antwerp is they, they feel that it's not always reliable if their bus or tram is going to be on time. So that's why we've added the real-time info. As you can see here, line 23 is coming in four minutes. Yes, it has a, a delay of three minutes, but you only have to wait four more minutes. So that's what almost launching. And then what we are working on right now is to get all of the other um, mobility providers um, incorporated. So what I've shown you before from the steps and the scooters, it's from two, two providers, Bird and Poppy, but everyone else, uh, we're talking to them um, and we're building a roadmap to also pull them in, get a data pipeline um, and make it as real time as possible. Um, so what I said, we want to make it more real time. We want to get more shared mobility. And then we're doing three big builds by the end of this year um, is for all the bike routes from A to B. We want to enhance those routes. We want to give people more possibilities, more options. Um, so make the bike routes better. And the same for walking routes. We want to make our walking routes better so people can say, no, I do want to be the fastest. Or I want to take the most... Um, the nicest route or the greenest route so we can send them to the parks in Antwerp. So those are the things we're looking at there. And then of course, for our app, we have an app. You can use it for 
looking up roots. Um, but what's missing right now that we think is really important, important is the navigation. So really turn by turn navigation. Also when you're biking, maybe by headsets, um, you don't have to take your phone out for safety reasons. Um, so we're working on that um, for the end of the year. And um, this is something more for next year. I showed you that we're making profiles for our users where they can tell us um, which um, transportation modes they prefer. Uh, and we also want to make a uh, more personal uh, notification or communication system towards them so that if they don't have a car, we don't have to notify them of huge um, uh, traffic works in the ring road, but maybe they have a shared bike system and one of the stations near their house is going to be unavailable for the next month. Maybe we should push that information to them instead of the traffic information. So that's for making it more personal. Um, I think I'm out of time, but that's all right because this is my end slide. <laughs> um, and I believe, Tim, that now we have five minutes for a Q&A if there are any questions already. Indeed, thanks very much Silke. That was a really good and comprehensive presentation. I think it was so comprehensive we don't have any questions yet. So I'd like to ask our attendees if, if they do have any questions for Silke, please start adding them in and we can, we'll also hopefully have some time at the end of the, the webinar where we can ask those. I, th I think it's a, a really Im impressive system just in terms of the, the number of uh, modes and, and the, the really intermodal route planning that's undertaken, which you don't get in, in Google and, and, and many of the other apps. So I think that's really impressive. And now that you're adding the personalization touches and also the navigation system, it's uh, yeah, it's really turning into something very special. So uh, congratulations on that. Um, <laughs> I, I just have, yeah, I, I just have one question um, for, for the moment while we're waiting for other questions to come in from the attendees. Um, yeah, do you, do you have any information on the usage levels that you're achieving from, from people downloading the app and, and using the app? Yeah, definitely. So um, up until now, I think it's um, a year and a half now that we have the app um, from the end of 2018. Um, and we have 25 downloads for um, Apple and um, Android combined. So 25,000 downloads, but we don't have the exact numbers of people that deleted it afterwards. Okay, thanks. Yeah, but uh, again, a, an impressive number given that there are so many apps on the market and I guess it's constant advertising as well of what you're you're doing as well. So uh, that's, that's great, thanks very much. I'll just check, I think um, at the moment, is there, uh, there is a question that's come up. Uh, there's, a, there's a question here. Do you work in partnership with Skipper? Oh, Actually, yeah, we, a... we definitely know Skipper. So Skipper is one of the mass applications in Antwerp. Um, for those who, who aren't accustomed to mass, it's the same as our route planner, except they go one step further than us. So um, we still give people um, ticketing information. So we might tell them you need one ticket um, and you can buy it there. And sometimes we can already give them a price, but that's where it stops for us. And then we send them to uh, another party, which can be um, the mobility provider itself, or um, maybe in the future, a mass up because they will do all the ticketing um, and they will have the payment zone. Um, and we really want to leave that part um, to those providers and to the mass applications. And that's for a city, we don't want to do the payment system. That's not for us. So we are talking to Skipper and we are um, actively promoting and um, putting all the mobility providers and the mass applications like Skipper together and try to make them exchange all the data and work together. So not only with us, but also with each other. So people can get the, the best range of possibilities uh, with the best range of applications in Antwerp. And then afterwards they can pick and choose whatever works best for them. Okay, that, thanks very much for answering that question. That was very helpful. We just um, we've got a couple more questions coming through, but I'll just save those to the end. We'll just move to, to Trieste now. So we've got uh, 
We've got colleagues Fabio and Giorgio on, on, on the line as well. I know that Teresa has been working very hard in the last uh, year or two to develop their uh, data sharing platform and also to, to, to develop the, the, the route planning information for people driving their cars to the city and also moving and tourists moving around in the city. So first of all, we have uh, Fabio joining us and he's, Fabio is, uh, has a PhD and has, has 10 years of experience. He works as a, a consultant for the city of Trieste and has been working with them on their SUMP development and, and also working on transport modeling and, uh, and simulations. So w welcome, uh, Fabio. Um, Fabio is going to focus first of all on, on, on the context of the city of Trieste and their, their objectives. So um, thanks, thanks, Fabio. Hi everyone, thanks Tim and thanks uh, everyone for joining this, uh, this webinar today. Uh, so um, just uh, this hard presentation from Trieste, I would like to share you some thoughts and uh, practices about our development of the platform. Later on, George Villacobalis will go into the, the platform more technically and deeply in the context. So just a brief uh, overview about uh, the purpose measures that we are developing and uh, going on in Trieste. Uh, I think that uh, today we are focusing on the first uh, three measures, in particular to the um, transport information platform and the role of the multi-governance office and on the development on the sustainable Urban Mobility Plan, which is almost ready here in Trieste, but in general we have uh, uh, several measures coming from the transportation topic to the um, information, uh, uh, information to uh, citizens and tourists, urban access control, and uh, finally to the uh, freight uh, uh, measures, in particular related to the port of, uh, of Trieste. So, uh, just a few um, information numbers about the, uh, the context that we are, in which we are working on. So, in 2019, in Trieste, we had uh, almost uh, 1 million tourists coming through the city, especially um, coming through the, the cruises, which are very now very popular before <laughs> the COVID lockdown, but still, uh, we hope that uh, we're going to, to continue in the next future. And uh, uh, almost half of the mobility in, in the city is already sustainable, so this is a good, uh, a good result for us. And the last uh, good results that we are serving is that uh, we launched uh, the, um, the new bike sharing service in February this year. And in just a few months, despite the one month, more than one month of the close, uh, close service before the lockdown, we have uh, more than uh, five thousands of subscriptions, so we are very happy about that. And as I said before, that our plan for the human mobility, sustainable mobility, is almost ready and should be approved um, by the summer, I think, so I hope. So today we are focusing um, on the transit and on the deployment of the platform in particular. This is the context in which uh, the transportation information platform fits in. Uh, basically, we developed the, the, the platform to collect, uh, manage, and distribute uh, information related to mobility and transportation systems in, uh, in Trieste. So, um, the first thing we have to we have to deal with was the participation process. Um, this was a, a very big effort because we had to talk with the, both internal stakeholders. I mean, within the offices in the municipality of Trieste and with the external, so within the city and also beyond, because several companies or stakeholders in general are not related only to Trieste, but in general with the, uh, the biggest area on the whole region, or even uh, some national, uh, national activities. So our role here was to uh, involve the, uh, different uh, actors in the same, uh, on the same table in order to let them discuss and uh, share uh, all the common efforts that they were going to, um, to, to deploy into the platform, and especially sharing with them the same goal that we had to, to do with. And in particular, we talked with the internal office that uh, are managing roadworks in the city, uh, all the manufacturing activities in the, in the city of Trieste and even on the, on the region. 
the local police, the tourism office, and uh, the promotional uh, office of culture here in Trieste. So, in general, we are collecting uh, uh, different information from the tourist side to the security with the police and to the um, street activities and with the roadworks office and manufacturing. And, oh, sorry. Uh, this was this was the internal uh, process with the stakeholders. The external process involved uh, four main uh, actors. So, in, from the top, uh, the Trieste Transport, which is the main uh, uh, local transport company in Trieste, and then uh, with the company that manages the bike sharing system, all the parking managers, and uh, also the local territory administration, which covers. Uh, the municipality of Fieste and of uh, five more uh, municipalities in the, in the region. So the, this was a, a, long, a long and difficult journey to let them uh, set on the same table, discuss on the same goal, and uh, most of all, <laughs> uh, to try to share all the different uh, data sources into a single platform. So. Uh, Actually, I think that uh, almost never before the Portis project, uh, we managed to let uh, so different actors sit and, and talk uh, together on the same table. So this was also a, a big result from uh, the multi-governance office that uh, I like to uh, allow us to, to share all this, uh, this, uh, this goal with uh, also so, so many actors in the city. So we are now in the uh, talking about the platform. We are on the final testing stage. Uh, later on, Giorgio will uh, talk about it uh, more on the technical side. But uh, I think it's now ready to to release to be released. Uh, the platform uh, managed to to include and uh, uh, different uh, informations for citizens, for tourists, uh, for mobility planners and also for uh, the, all the human resources within the municipality. So there is an internal section, very interesting and, and in my opinion, very innovative to, um, to get uh, some information ready for the municipality and for um, the companies that are working within, within the city. Uh, the contents uh, uh, are uh, spanning from the public transport timetable in the city, from the all the pedestrian areas, all the bicycle paths, bike sharing stations that are very, uh, uh, as I said before, they are very, uh, very new because of the service starting in February. There are no, now two more bike, bike sharing stations, the number 11 and 12, that um, are now almost been uh, released in the whole port area. And finally, all the information about uh, parking spaces. Uh, so by the availability of parking spaces in the city, uh, especially within uh, um, the different, uh, different spots and, uh, and also related to the application that uh, let the user choose the right uh, parking spaces, uh, the right parking space, sorry, in uh, function of his uh, final destination in, the, in his journey. There is uh, also another section uh, which is dedicated uh, to the old port uh, because this is a very innovative uh, project that is going to change completely the, the city of Trieste, which is a big, big area that is now um, been uh, part of the city and um, is part of the big, uh, big qualification project process. And so the idea here is to let uh, People access uh, several uh, data with, uh, related, for instance, to course and projects related to this area, and also to let uh, mobility partners and professionals to get uh, in a very easy way uh, traffic data and the studies about uh, this area to, to propose new projects and, uh, and new ideas for the, for the area. Uh, so, the big innovation here was the, because um, the, the we have several uh, issues uh, uh, regarding the uh, control management uh, when uh, several companies are trying to, to do several work, work, works in the city. So, for instance, uh, closure, partial closure of a city because of uh, different, uh, um, different um, work, uh, works for, uh, I don't know, maybe for 
um, renovation processes on the street, etc. So uh, within the, the platform, now contractors and users can define directly on the map uh, the spatial and temporal extension of the, the road closure, and then also send pictures to the start of the status of the world works uh, directly to the police, uh, which is the uh, we have to control the the process and the timetable, the correct timetable of the of the works. This is an example of uh, how the platform works. So, for instance, the, here the user can uh, interact within uh, his finger via the app or with the mouse through the, uh, through the browser, um, tracking the, the road closure on the map. And then, so uh, everyone can, uh, can see the, the, the process here. Uh, and uh, then the user can also have the information about how long has uh, the works. Uh, uh, gone for the for for months or for weeks or whatever, and then also send pictures in, in order to get all the information ready and also in a sort of, of real time. So finally, the, the the platform integrates also different information that can coming from different uh, websites in general. So we have the information about the, the, the portal of this commentary estate. Which is the main source of touristic information for the city. There is a, uh, a link with the, the Trieste Metro project, uh, which is uh, also a big, brand new project uh, related to uh, the release of seven touristic itineraries through the city. Uh, the bicycle, uh, of course, itineraries within the city and within the region, through the, thanks to the, um, the administration of the of the outer region of Trieste. So every every information is basically fit, uh, fit within, the, within the same platform. Uh, finally, in order to get uh, and improve the user experience, we have uh, we decided to uh, to put at the, at the end uh, a page with the sort of feedback uh, of, from, from the users. And where are we basically asking whether the user changes mobility behavior thanks to the platform, or in general the user personal experience with the with the information contained contained in the in the platform, in order to, on both sides and just to okay improve the user experience and uh, get useful statistics also about the mobility behavior in Trieste and to collect the data uh, of course and things. Uh, just, uh, okay, I think uh, we are in time, and I would like to thank uh, Paola Capone and Carlotta Cesco for the support on these measures. Uh, I don't know if uh, uh, we kind of join the, the, the meeting today, but uh, I would like to thank them for the support and the contribution of this uh, presentation. And now I think that I uh, would like to thank everyone for the attention, and uh, uh, I think that uh, I'm leaving the talk to Giorgio to go into the technical part of the platform. Thanks again. Thanks very much, uh, Fabio, for the presentation as well. Really interesting to hear how many, how many different groups of people can interact with the platform, from people working on the on the construction on the roadworks through to through to tourists arriving in the cities. And I think uh, Giorgio is going to to provide a little bit of information on the technical uh, background to the platform and also show us how it looks in reality. So thanks, Giorgio, for joining us. Uh, Giorgio is a, a a computer scientist uh, holds a PhD, and he's a, a founder of the, the uh, technical consultancy Autologs. So uh, thanks, Giorgio. Hi, ho. Uh, I don't know if you can see my screen. Okay, I would start uh, my presentation with just a few introduction about uh, what we have done, and then uh, I would like to show you just a little live of the platform that we created. So uh, the main problem for us was the information fragmentation because uh, uh, we have different uh, sources of information, for instance, municipality website, the tourist website, the telegram channel, private tourist information, public transportation website, events, repository, and something that is not yet electronic also uh, at all. Uh, for instance, we have a PDF file, uh, or uh, Excel file or something that is not ready to use uh, in order to be integrated in the platform. 
what's the effort for uh, for us is try to convert all these uh, uh, sources in uh, one smart transport system. Uh, the goal for us was uh, try to create a kind of platform uh, that can try to collect all different heterogeneous uh, data sources and create another level in an API le uh, layer that can be used from different actors. For instance, uh, for tourist app, uh, parking app, uh, our website app, or other app that want to access uh, to this kind of repository. So all the information that we collect are uh, uh, um, accessible uh, to uh, uh, this uh, API layer. So uh, if the municipality decided to share this information with other actors, or other super house, or people that want to create their own app based on uh, the information that we collect, uh, uh, they can access to this information uh, without any problem. So uh, the main effort for us was create to one repository for uh, infinite applications. That's uh, the, the main problem that we try to solve. How we can do it? Because uh, we start with different kind of format. Maybe people that work uh, in these uh, environments can understand this. Uh, that sometimes it's not so easy to try to collect and uh, uh, to uh, share information because we have uh, XML files, uh, if you think about the uh, feeds or news, uh, GeoJSON for uh, map representation, GIS, uh, data, PDF, uh, JSON, uh, XLS uh, file, GTFS uh, file that is very common uh, for uh, uh, public transportation uh, timetables, paper, sometimes uh, we have paper, and telegram bot because uh, uh, the municipality was very smart because uh, they already created these kind of channels uh, uh, where they try to uh, inform uh, people in real time about the news, about uh, uh, works uh, alongside roads, uh, interaction, uh, all this kind of information in real time. But uh, uh, how we can uh, take this information and share with uh, a format uh, with with uh, other application? We create a, a bot, a Telegram bot that is able to listen, take these kind of messages convert them in a JSON standard, and then share this kind of information directly on the map. Uh, so what we can see is that uh, we try to convert all this kind of information in uh, only one format, that is the JSON format. So all the API usually uh, give you back a JSON file with information that you request. So uh, the API is based on a RESTful uh, web service approach. I hope uh, not to be uh, too much technical, but uh, now this is the basis of this kind of application. Uh, what are the pro of this kind of approach? Uh, is uh, uh, all the information can be used in order to create new and different application. Uh, the scalability, so it's easy uh, to manage this system and let grow up it. Definition of data format exchange because we start from a completely different heterogeneous uh, data sources and we convert in a very common and easy to use data format and the accounting uh, because uh, we created also a backend application in order to um, uh, to put information. Uh, in the platform uh, by the municipality, for instance, to have the events, projects, uh, uh, and all this kind of uh, information that the municipality decided to share with the citizen. Uh, and also, uh, we have also another little application that is based on interaction between uh, between uh, uh, the works that are uh, made uh, in the street 
and the company that made this kind of works. So the company can share information about uh, uh, what what they are dying. For instance, they can um, share information ab about uh, uh, if they occupy one lane of the street or uh, just the uh, pedestrian side or uh, the street is completely uh, stopped, uh, broken. For this reason, uh, and then they can also add uh, until uh, when. So they can uh, introduce uh, data, information that is very useful for people that usually uh, move uh, into the town. Okay, uh, what is this? This is just a uh, graphical representation, main parts of uh, the platform. So people, what the people can see, we create a, a smart map where uh, people can access to parking uh, information for car, camper, touristic bus, people with disabilities and so on, urban mobility. For instance, we have uh, roadworks, uh, healthy Z, uh, sustainable uh, mobility, it's a cycle path, pedestrian zone and so on, and public transportation. It is uh, stops and lane, uh, or uh, rail station, tram, and so on. Uh, for a tourist point of view, we, uh, we uh, introduce uh, another map, another section that is related to the point of interest, and we introduce tours. So you can try to find inside our platform uh, a kind of a catalog of different trips with different uh, hours, and you can choose what kind of trips. And these trips are uh, guided. Uh, so we have uh, uh, mixed the information of uh, attraction that you are seeing with the information about how to reach next stop, and so on. Then uh, we have a dedicated uh, page for parks. Uh, the ordinances, that is uh, what I just told before, that is related to roadworks. The old port, because it's part of uh, the, uh, the project, so we dedicated it uh, a section with events and projects. So, uh, news, where we collect all news that coming from uh, region, municipality, from um, uh, newspaper from all these kind uh, university information and so on and then a reserved area for uh, people that uh, are always to introduce uh, uh, continents uh, okay uh, now what I, what I want to do is just to have a look to the platform as you can see uh, we have a, a this is the home page of the platform where you can find our main uh, uh, section. So smart mobility project, events, news and feedback. You can reach the uh, smart mobility, for instance. And English version, obviously we can change. Here we can see all the bus stop in the city or uh, you can choose uh, to see train station for instance or uh, tram stops route uh, uh, water mobility is related because uh, Trieste is a city with a, a very um, big port area with tram reserved area that cannot be reached and so on but uh, what we introduced is a different way to use a uh, gtfs file uh, we you can uh, usually the main problem is try to uh, plan a trip so maybe you already know uh, uh, already know wh where is your destination what you can do uh, in this case, uh, you can uh, filter bus stop on the basis of data that you choose and that you plan. For instance, 
the bus stops are different from Sunday to Monday because there are different trips followed by tram. So you can filter it, you can choose when you want to take your bus, and then you can go to one uh, station, reach direction, the next bus for this line. Moreover, you can choose to highlight only the line that you are interested on. I think that this is, uh, is not exactly the use uh, for which uh, GTF files are uh, thinking, but uh, uh, this different use may be very useful because uh, you can change your approach because sometimes to read in tables it's very complicated. There are a lot, a lot of uh, exception. So you have different starts. Uh, you, you cannot do this in this day or in the night uh, are different and so on. By, by this way, you can filter it directly and then uh, you can see, okay, I need to reach uh, this garden. You can see where are the stops, uh, very close stoppers. You can align. We're getting shorter, shorter on time. If, can you uh, also show the uh, the parking, uh, the green parking? Yeah, 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 yeah. And Maybe the tourist routes, and then I think we might have I'm to. Finish it on this. Yeah. Sorry for that. Yeah, don't worry. Thank you. Uh, so you can understand that it's very easy to understand uh, what is the best solution for you. Then we have uh, a lot of area, reserved area. And what they ask it, it is the parking area. In the parking, you can choose a different kind of uh, filters. With the parking area, you can just understand whereas with some information, or if you prefer, you can show more detail. For instance, uh, the website, uh, email, uh, and uh, something that is uh, more interesting. For instance, you can see if uh, are allowed the motorcycle, camper, or uh, uh, how many floors do you have. Moreover, possibility to uh, even limitation bit, uh, for height, length, or width, because. Uh, uh, some of these um, parking area uh, cannot be reached with huge uh, vehicles. So for instance, so, uh, so on. Then we have uh, another part that is related uh, by the ordinance. So you can see in real time uh, street that are uh, broken with all information about uh, who is in charge to do this kind of work, uh, when they start, when they finish. It's possible to see image about uh, what is happening, and so on. And uh, all this kind of information is very useful if you are working on it. This is the feedback when uh, you create uh, a feedback with uh, all the uh, question that you uh, change dynamically. Maybe English is easy to read. Uh, have you used the parking app? Yes, okay. You should uh, complete the uh, questionnaire for parking app or no. In that case, you don't have it. Uh, more information are related to uh, environments and uh, everything about uh, uh, bike sharing. This is a connection with the uh, official bike sharing repository, information, and so on. Uh, what we can see is that there are a lot of this kind of information shared. Here we can access to the area. So you can see that there is an accounting because uh, uh, project and uh, point of interest is uh, things that I can add 
but if I am at the main user, obviously I can add all the stuff that I need. The next step. Thanks, Giorgio. Um, sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt you there because we're getting very short on time, and there were a couple of questions uh, coming in. Is okay. It, so, sorry, we didn't have time to show all the features. It's it's really impressive I, I all, all the information. I finished to show, I finished the show the website. I just introducing now my the app. Yeah, no, no problem. Could you could you just briefly? I was really interested. I saw that there was a a green parking. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is. The app. Can you briefly explain that one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the the app where you can choose your vehicles, your fuel, and uh, we create a different kind of uh, solution uh, because uh, when you enter your destination. You can choose with different kind of uh, ranking factor. The first one is a green factor, so is the nearest intermodal parking area, uh, the nearest intermodal parking area to the actual position of the user. The second one is the distance from the destination, so I try to be uh, close to my destination. And the third one and uh, the cheapest solution, because uh, there are different kind of interest for user. So you can see uh, all the ranking produced. You can choose one of them, and then you can be guided directly to the parking entrance. And this is uh, uh, the last uh, uh, app that is related to the tourist uh, information. In particular, this is what I say. You can see different kind of itinerary uh, separated in direction. Uh, duration and you can see all the information uh, on uh, how you can move uh, around the city with this kind of uh, uh, itinerary. So I just finish. Uh, thank you very much, Giorgio. And, yeah, uh, sorry uh, about it. A lot of problem. things I do. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've been working very hard, and I think uh, there's a lot of features available on the on the platform there I, th I think this one of guiding people driving their cars to, to the best interchange points is a, is a really valuable feature um, and then also you've got the, the, the tourist uh, aspects there as well so thanks thanks very much for your for your presentations i think we just there were a couple of questions that came in also for zilka so i think we've just got time for those very quickly before the end of the, the webinar so um there was one about does does the, the smart ways to antwerp app also provide cost and fair information. I, I think you covered that a little bit um, previously. Yeah, um, yeah, so so we, oh, sorry, I was going to add on that. Um, just short answer that the last couple of years, um, we've tried to avoid telling people how much everything costs because we felt we had to stay neutral as a government and all of the people, all of the solutions that we uh, show, they're all partners with us. So if we're gonna put price to price on our website, um, we might yeah, enhance the competition between them. Um, but now we're slowly evolving and really being open about all the prices because they all have very different price systems. And for the users, it's just more transparent to really be open about it and show them the differences, if there's a start cost or not, how much does it cost per minute, do you have a reg registration fee or not? It's just more, more transparent. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, that's really interesting to hear how that's evolving now as well, working with your your partners, you know, the, the providers, on a, uh, an acceptable solution for them as well. Um, the the last one was: Is it possible to transfer the smart ways to Antwerp app to another city? So, uh, can you go into business and uh, sell your solution to another city? Well, you can use Route Planner now in, um, I think it's Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg. Um, but the thing is, we've added so much data and so much um, yeah, mathematics and algorithms behind it, um, and mainly specifically for Antwerp. So you can use all these features in other cities and you, you can look things up but you will only get the full experience for Antwerp now. So if any other city is interested, they can get an API from us 
but they would have to really work together with us on providing all the necessary data, all the layers and all the mobility information needed to really get where you want to go with the, the route planner and uh, the mobility map. Yeah. So, so gathering the data in the right formats is a lot of work. And uh, yeah, I think that came through the presentation from Trieste as well, uh, how much work that is. So um, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I, I, I'd really like that, to thank our presenters for, for their time preparing for this and for, for sharing their knowledge and to everyone for joining the, the webinar today as well. Um, the, there's a recording of, of the, the last, uh, the Human Dimension uh, webinar also on the Civitas website under Portis, and we'll also provide a, a recording on this, on this uh, webinar as well on that site. There are a couple of other questions and we'll, we'll do a wrap-up email just uh, sending people that information. Uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to, to contact me. I'll, I'll send an e email to all attendees after this session. But uh, yeah, if you'd like any more information from the cities, then please feel free to, to get in touch with us at Portis. So uh, thanks once again to everyone and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your afternoons. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.